There you go. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Tampa City Hall, Old City Hall. I'd like to call this special call meeting to order. Uh, at this time, if we could just have a moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Roll call, please. Carlson. Here. Goose. Here. Citro. Here. Vieira. Here. Miranda. Here. And Maniscalco. Here. We have a physical form. Thank you very much. Mr. Shelby. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of Tampa City Council. I'm Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Today is Tuesday, April 5th, and we here at Old City Hall for a special call meeting and the purpose of the special call meeting is to select and appoint an applicant to fill the vacancy for the unexpired, unexpired term of District 3 at large, Tampa City Council seat, um, that person being sworn in at the April 7th, uh, 2022 meeting. Now the public and the citizens of Tampa are able to watch, listen and view this meeting on Spectrum Channel 640, Frontier Channel 15 and on the internet live streaming at tampa.gov forward slash live stream one word. Now uh, this meeting does incorporate um, communications media technology pursuant to council's policy and uh, therefore um, I, what I would ask is that council uh, would um, waive the rules to include the use of CMT in today's um, proceedings. So moved. Sorry. Motion from Councilman Miranda, Senator Councilman C. Troll in favor? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Before we go to public comment and we begin, uh, I'd just like to say thank you to all the applicants that are here today. Thank you for um, responding to the call of duty, uh, for your commitment to service in this community and this great city. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I know that it takes a lot of courage to apply, to put yourself out there in the public eye, to stand before uh, council at the lectern. Public speaking is never easy. I will tell you that the last time this took place when we had two vacancies on the council in 2010, I was one of the applicants. So, you know, and Councilman Citro is one of the applicants. So, we, uh, we know what it's like to be there. And again, thank you for your, for your courage, your dedication, your commitment, and your desire to serve. I know many faces, I recognize many faces, and I know that uh, we are blessed with so many wonderful candidates. Thank you. All right. Uh, having said that, we will go to public comment. This is not for the applicants. If you are here to speak but are not an applicant, uh, please approach the lectern and state your name. You will have um, three minutes to speak. Good morning, City Council. Um, my name is Jay Passmore. I'm here to speak on the very important matter of the state of our City Council. Um, as I look at City Council, I see uh, all cisgendered men. As I look at city council, I see one black person. Um, the state of our city council and the way that is moving could potentially, if one member is forced out, the only black member on the council was forced out, lead to an all white city council. Um, currently, our city council is not reflective uh, of the diversity of Tampa and its residents. Um, I, I take uh, very, I take offense to some of the articles I've seen and some of the things I've said regarding uh, one of our city council members. I know we're not allowed to say, say names, but um, every city council member sitting up there has done something egregious. Uh, just last year, one of the city council members met with known white supremacists who beat black women in the streets. Um, uh, community patriots is what they're called. The founder of that group with the most laziest search ever on Facebook, you could find him bragging and have pictures of him talking about storming the Capitol. Yet a city council member thought it was in good standing to meet with this white supremacist group. When, when I talk about what city, the city of Tampa deserves and needs, it needs people with empathy, with compassion and cultural understanding. Um, as I look, and I'm not here to say whether the allegations are true or false surrounding one of our city council members, but when I see a bunch of white men 
trying to force out the only black person on council who haven't come up and owned their wrongs to the community. Last year, I was in 2020, excuse me, I was hit by a white supremacist at a protest. 2020, I was beat and left unconscious for 12 minutes by TPD. Currently today, my hips are not aligned. I am permanently disabled from the actions of 2020. One city council member said, protests don't work. The last time I came to a city council, I was assaulted by a police officer. So I took Bill Carson's words that protests don't work. And I went and I filed a complaint at TPD. I took a picture, showed him. They said, oh, he don't work here anymore. He's a, he's a retired police officer. There's no accountability. You sit high and you look low and you don't look at the needs of what people need. When you're looking to see who is going to be appointed to Dean Felder's seat, you need to look at the needs and the will of the people. You need to analyze your own privileges and understand where you're coming from and how you're acting. And that's my time. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker, please state your name. Good morning, my name is Sally C. Lee. A lot greeting to all women here today who took a, a, a grand stand forward to come forward, stand up, move forward on the issues. Number one, homeless housing to show concern for issues. Homeless changing agenda to humanity knowing housing laws set for change and transparency to the people to do right by all know the emergency for rent freeze to be civil and impartial we must survive together or perish apart housing justice the lady for purpose of housing and home and rights to affordability must be anointed and appointing. Amen, amen. Future justice now begins. Amen. Thank you very much. Next, uh, next speaker, please state your name. Sure, good morning. Uh, James Michael Shaw, Jr., um, West Tampa resident, and uh, I want to hear to speak on behalf of one of the applicants. Um, you've, I've already emailed you what I had to say, but I want to read you what some others have had to say who perhaps couldn't be here this morning uh, for, until they stop me and the clock runs out. So, uh, Jade Alexander Craig from Councilman Maniscalco's district. County Britain's an activist who has come from a part of Tampa whose voice has historically been underrepresented, as evidenced by the disinvestment all over East Tampa. She's from the roots of the community and has a voice that needs to be at the table. Rather than sitting on the outside as an activist, she needs to be a colleague and a decision maker with members of the city council. As she said in a 2021 Tampa Bay Times article, we have to prioritize the voices in our community that can speak truth to power. Adding her to the council would do just that. Robert C. Williams, District 5, uh, Councilman Goods District. I know that the years of tireless effort that Mrs. Burton has put uh, forth on bottom-up organizing will keep her particularly attuned to the ev everyday issues facing the working class and poor citizens of Tampa. Devin Cheeves, Councilman Dews, Goods District. Ms. Connie Burton is a true servant leader in the community. I have had the pleasure of knowing her and leading her from the past for the past six years. She is not just someone who talks the talk, but she literally walks the walk. She's working in the community every single day to help the most marginalized within our community seek justice and accountability. She's an advocate for mothers and children, for true public safety, like quality, affordable housing, and livable wages. She's a mentor to dozens of young people throughout the Tampa Bay area. And what's more, she doesn't do this work for notoriety, but from a place of self-determination for herself, her family, and her community. She is the truth and speaks the truth to power no matter who likes it or not. We need more elected officials who are for the people like Ms. Burton. Erlene Terrell, Councilman Goods District. She knows her community commitment and, and represents all of the people. She's known for her integrity, honesty, and overall commitment to the community now and the future. Delia Gadsen Yarbrough, Maniscalco's District. She's an active member of the community and an advocate for those who are in need. She will work hard to increase accountability. Sebastian Ballister, uh, Goods District. She will represent those who are not usually represented in Tampa City Council. She stands for what I want in the city councilor and city policy. Mona Judge, Councilman Goods District. I first met Connie Burton in 1985 fighting for the people. She's a champion for the community. I know she'll continue to fight for the people. Bernice Luridan, Councilman Maniscalco's District. I support her because she's a progressive black woman. 
Chardonnay comes from in Goods District. Connie is a fierce community leader, and her values have always aligned putting people over corporate interests. We need more community leaders in elected office who will actually put their people-centric values to work. David Jones, Councilman Vieira's district. I support her because she actively advocates for our community, whether that be demanding housing reform or aid and resources for the black community. She's on top of it. So there's many more, but I have to stop there. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next up, please state your name, sir. Good morning. Uh, I'm Dennis Lopez. Um, I'm pleased to be here this morning. I'm a lifelong Tampa resident. I've had the occasion and pleasure to have met some of you folks on the, on the uh, council. Um, I truly love and care about this city of mine. I've had the occasion to live in other parts of this country, and I think the quality of life that Tampa has and can offer others is to be admired, is to be treasured. Uh, my parents, both deceased were lifelong Tampa residents. One of my grandparents was born here before 1890. So I think I have the benefit of the history of this town, the wonderful history of what a mel melting pot it was for many cultures that came here. My other three grandparents emigrated, excuse me, yes, two from uh, Italy, one from Spain, all seeking a better life. And if the council has been watching and paying attention, and I'm sure you have, Tampa is currently undergoing a unprecedented boom and change. I read the other day that 300,000 new people are moving into the state of Florida every year. Tampa is experiencing something we never have before. I'm here to speak on behalf of a candidate for this vacancy, and her name is Meredith Freeman and she's seated there in the back of this room. Another speaker touched on it a moment ago. Looking at the panel, um, suffices to say it could possibly benefit, perhaps, by a little diversity. Meredith is an African-American woman. She's lived in the Tampa Bay area, worked in the Tampa Bay area for the last 20 years, going to school here. Um, one of the reasons I asked her, why do you want to be on city council? Uh, she said, I see what's going on here, and I'm a single mother of a 10-year-old son. She's an attorney with a stellar reputation and career with firms here in the Tampa area, highly respected firms in the Tampa area. Um, she brings a viewpoint, I would suggest, that presently may be lacking on the, count on the council. For those reasons, if Tampa is still destined to be America's next great city, I would sincerely hope in, that you would give Ms. Freeman your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker, please. Okay. And please state your name when you approach the lectern. Hi, I'm Barbara Kennedy Gibson. She, her are my pronouns, and I live in Bill Carson's district. Um, I'd like to continue reading. I am in favor of a progressive black woman to be appointed. Um, I've lived in Tampa, and my parents, and my grandparents also, and um, my family's been in real estate, and I think that um, I and my family are responsible for some of the damage done in this town, and I think some reparations can be done with getting Connie on the city council. Um, Chris Morrison in District 5, we need people who speak truth to power. Connie doesn't back down and she will be the proper pain for many people in the city, but she always will fight for what is right. Also, when you have an activist like Connie, um, she'll step up and enter public office. That's amazing. Many activists just want to criticize from the outside. The fact that she wants a seat at the table speaks very highly of her. There are likely many things happening in the city that she has a very strong opinion. But when she gets in the office, she will discover just how complex the situation is and realize it isn't easy, and we may think it's from the outside. Again, a very good thing, because she'll communicate the complexity back to the people in her community. I would have loved to serve on this seat more than anything. This is Tober Morrison, I guess. Um, 
would have loved to serve in the seat more than anything, but the moment I heard she was a potential for the seat, I didn't even pursue it because that's how strong I feel she deserves this position. In government, often what is, it, what is easy isn't right, and what's right isn't easy. Connie Burton for the city council is what's right, and it won't be easy for the others on the council. So now, will you do what is easy for your own interests, or will you do what is right for the good city of Tampa? Um, Freddie West Hudson in Orlando Goods District, we need someone who will be fair to all and who will listen and who will speak the truth. Nestor Ortiz from District 6, um, she understands the community and the issues in a way that many people can't. We know that. Um, Michelle Williams from District 6, Maniscalcos, um, a champion for the community and our issues. Christopher Cano, Connie is a true grassroots voice of the neighbors and our families. She should be the voice on the council for us. Uh, Christine Lee says, I believe in her. Joseph McLennan says she is as Tampa as Tampa gets. You want, you want to keep the spirit of Tampa Bay, this is a step in the right direction. Um, and I want to just speak to that. I, w was, I was integrated in Plant High School, and um, I believe that the people I went to school with uh, have suffered. The black people I went to school with have suffered in this um, city, and I would like Connie Burton. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, next speaker, please. Please state your name. Good morning, Matisnot. I think this is a momentous day for the city of Tampa because people that we criticize from the outside and people that we're adamant about, have adamant feelings about that, if they're doing the right thing for the people that we represent, we say, hey, maybe the right thing isn't being done, that it's people left out a percentage of the people left out, I think people have heard me use that 26% figure on numerous occasions. It's so many things that's going on with the city that for since the city had been formed probably in the 1850s that African people have been left out of, blatantly left out of. And it's not just with the political machinery of the city. It's with the judicial machinery of the city. It's with the economical machinery of the city. It's with the social fabric of the city. It's with Riverwalk that's going on right now, that where you see they tout in Riverwalk, but they have destroyed West Tampa yes. and everything in its path. And when I say destroyed, for howsoever developers look at it, and it's like gravy train for them, but for us and people who look like us and people who are poor and disadvantaged, it's not a good look. And it's not that they can't make it anymore in this city, it's that they're being stamped out. People rents are being raised from one price to another that's phenomenally unreal. That's not only unreal, it's unfair. And if the right people get a hold of it, it's probably illegal, but the right people haven't gotten a hold of it. So now we have an opportunity. It's a momentous day in the city of Tampa because we have an opportunity to appoint or elect whatsoever word you want to use, someone who have, for the last 30-something years, have stood up independently, a person who probably no other person can possibly say, even if they had to stand by themselves. You can pass and see that person on the street corner by themselves standing up for the people. That's an interesting person. That's a very interesting person. That only, that's an indication, that's verification, that's an endorsement for one person only. I'm not even going to call that person's name. <laughs> that's one person's only. A person who we know that's not financially endowed, mm -hmm. but people who have to take out of their pockets mm -hmm. and give to this city. It's time that this city can do something for her. Thank you very Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Sir. <laughs> All right. Are there any other public speakers here in person today? 
All right, we have uh, a few that are registered online. I see Rick Fernandez is the first speaker, is that correct? Go ahead. Hello, Chair, this is Rick Fernandez. Can you hear me all right? Yes, sir, go ahead. All right, thank you. Good morning to all. Uh, I, I first want to uh, associate myself with the comments of uh, Chair Maniscalco at the top of the meeting. Uh, thank, thank you to all the applicants. I know several of you personally, and uh, I too am aware of how scary it can be to be in the seats that you occupy at this moment. Stepping up is a, uh, is a courageous act. So for all of us, for me, thank you for even being there. That said, um, Council, I come to you from Tampa Heights. I incorporate my written comments by reference. They were submitted last week. And I stand this morning in support of one of your applicants, Lynn Hertek, to fill the District 3 City Council vacancy. In considering Lynn's application, I ask you please to take note of her relevant resume, reflecting first off leadership within the old Seminole Heights Neighborhood Association. In that capacity, she has been in a position to manage relationships between developers and residential community stakeholders, finding solutions for design and infrastructure issues. She has been of service on the Variance Review Board as well for several years, understanding city code and ordinances, a position very relevant to the position that all of you fill today. Also her service on the Charter Review Commission several years ago, and the fact that she is a multimodal transportation advocate and all that that means in the context of the city of Tampa that we are living in today. For better or worse, all of you know me. And I say that advisedly. I know I have not always been on the same side of issues with all of you. But you all know the issues that move me to action at moments like this. For me, it's not just about opposing inter interstate expansion through the urban core of Tampa. That's the, the thing that brought me into the public light seven years ago, but that's not the only issue that motivates me. It's about advocacy for the citizens of Tampa, our history, our quality of life. And in my opinion, Lynn Hertak is the advocate we need in this moment and for the future of the city. You gentlemen have an embarrassment of riches this morning. There are a lot of good applicants before you. But in my opinion, Lynn Hertak is the crown jewel. And I hope you will follow my advice in appointing her to join your dais. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. All right, next uh, we have Christina Costa, correct? Correct, Ms. Costa is not logged on at this time. In lieu of her appearance, she did send an email to council yesterday afternoon. Very good, next then is Michael Randolph. Good uh, my name is Michael Randolph. I'm with the West Tampa TDC, and I wish all the candidates. Um, hope you do well. My, head, my issue here today is because of the violence and the crime that's going on in our community. And I'm hoping whoever that candidate is has a strong understanding on the ground level of violence in our community. On April 26th, we're going to be giving a national meeting on what works related to public safety. My concern is, and as you see, the number goes up. This summer is going to be one of the violent summers probably in decades. Uh, we need to begin to address the issue of violent crime from a different perspective. And I encourage everybody to be part of that discussion because we're going to be having people from around the nation to talk about what's going on in that community. To the candidates that's running for office, I would never run for office because you can't do right and you can't be wrong. So I salute you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Oh, no, no. We have one more. Next is Stephanie Pointer. All right. Go. Hey, good morning, Jim. Good morning. I'm here to remind you that the people of Tampa chose Councilman Dinkfelder for a reason. 
Councilman Dinkfelder's disposition to stand up for the neighborhoods. Councilman Dinkfelder voted what he thought was right, even when it wasn't popular. That bit him in the butt. The citizens are watching today. They are watching to see if you choose a yes person. They are watching to see if that person chooses to work with the citizens, or is it their priority to do what those who fund the PAC fund by developers want? Remember, TAC folks, they might vote, but they can't vote in mass. Remember, voters are the ones who count. Voters are watching. Voters vote, and they are watching. Voters create neighborhoods, not PACs. Voters will be watching. Do the right thing. Ask each applicant if they are ready to fight for the right thing, even when it goes against the flow. Ask each applicant if they read the Florida Ethics Decision of 2020-008 and they are willing to give up their real estate or legal careers while they're in office, making the whopping $53,000 a year that you guys do. Do the right thing, gentlemen. P.S. Two minutes is not enough for each one of these candidates. That was under the assumption that you would have 100 applications. You should give each applicant an additional minute to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anybody registered? So that concludes public comment. Uh, Councilman Carlson? Yeah, if I could, um, I, I um, just want to say for the record, I agree with the the, the um, comments about adding diversity. Obviously, we need females and we need more African Americans on the board. Um, but I want, for the record, since the media is here, um, the Hispanic Latino community in Tampa is also very important and help build this community. And I'm, I, I don't know which of my colleagues uh, identify as, as Hispanic. Any, any of you all? Charlie, any? Kit? My mother's my mother from Cuba. Yeah. All of y'all are white, bro. Stop. Don't do this. Don't but I, for the, I, I identify as Hispanic. Yes. So we have. Do you, Guido, or not? I'm. My mother was born in Cuba. I'm oh, first generation oh, American. Yeah. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's that it's Hispanic versus African American, but but just the characterization that it's all white and not, not Hispanic. All, all white. You the. Can be um, white and Thank you. Thank the, you. Um, I, I think we need to respect and honor our Hispanic heritage in Tampa. I'm not. I'm Swedish American. So I, I just wanted to identify that. And um, it, it, uh, three of my colleagues speak Spanish, and um, at least a couple speak Italian. And, and we should um, make sure that we acknowledge the important history they have in Tampa. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilman Goose? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> you know, we lost, uh, in my opinion, a true soldier, <clears throat> Mr. Dingfelder. Someone who fought for communities, someone who was not afraid to stand up, and someone that uh, I know in my heart care for the people. I'm just going to be frank with those applicants that are coming forward to me today. Uh, most of you know I stand with the people. I won't support anybody who won't stand with the people. I won't support anybody who won't look at the facts and make a good decision for this city and not because of money. The city must grow. We must have development, of course, but we have to have development that is encompass of everybody in the city. I will not support anybody who, who, who will not be a person who will stand up when there's a controversial issue. I will not support anybody who will not stand up if the administration is out of context and we need to put them back in context. I will support a person like that. I want somebody who can make a decision and can live with the decisions they make and not be afraid of any consequences, but be able to make a decision. So that's the person I'm looking for today, be it white, black, Latino, whoever. I want a person who will stand up and will do the right thing for all people in the city of Tampa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Councilman Vieira. Thank you, sir. I, Councilman Carlson, just want to say thank you for the Hispanic remark. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to uh, thank you for that, if I may. And I, and I wanted to give my two thoughts on it. You know, I was yesterday evening uh, at an event at Allen Temple AME Church on the 54th anniversary of the murder of Reverend Martin Luther King. And I was thinking of some of my times on council um, that, that for me, I've had pride as an elected official. I've served for about five years. And, and it's, you know, we have about two dozen people here today who are going for public office. 
And if, and, and just for the record, you have two people here who, who tried to apply. I know of, and, and were later elected. I know of other council members and elected officials who tried to apply in the past, didn't make it, and then were elected uh, and whatnot. So you're, you're, if, if you're not chosen, your time in public office, there's a good chance that it's gonna go, that it's gonna go. And you're gonna be able to, God willing, have those moments in public office where you can look back 10 minutes later, 10 years later, and go, you know what? I'm really proud of what I did that day. I'm really proud of what I said that day. Either being in the majority, the minority, whatever it was, you can have that time that you're really proud that you can look at it, your family, your loved ones can look at it and go, we know why they did that and we're proud of that. And, and we've all, all, all six of us have had moments like that. And everybody in public office, regardless of your party registration, I think has had moments like that. You know, and I can say, the biggest thing that I'm looking for, and I've already said this many times, you know, I, I value philosophy, uh, ideology, I guess. I shouldn't say ideology, strike that. I val values, values, I think, are very, very important in a person. Uh, I, I think that's critical. Um, and civility, being able to work with one another and build bridges. I think that's really important, very, very important for me. But I just wanted to say that, which is all y'all are going for public office. It takes a lot of heart a lot of chutzpah, right, to go out for public office. You put yourself out there in public and for people to analyze you, et cetera, et cetera. And I salute that, but God willing, y'all can have that moment uh, in public office because we've all had that in our lives. But when you do something and you're proud of that and you're proud of that, that's to me what public office is all about, being a Harry Truman. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Uh, that concludes public comment. We have 23 candidates that have qualified to fill this vacancy, and we have all the applications. I believe everybody here does. Uh, I received mine on Friday, and I read each and every word in each and every application um, because I know that you put a lot of heart and effort and time into this, and we looked at, uh, I did, I looked at all these applications. We have them here before us. Each applicant has two minutes to make their presentation. Uh, the applicants will be called in alphabetical order by last name, and the members of council may ask questions of individual applicants following each presentation. Now, I had a question uh, in looking at how we've all campaigned. If it was a Tiger Bay or if it was a neighborhood association forum, usually we were given 30 seconds or 60 seconds to respond. I think that would be fair. That is just my suggestion. Um, I don't want to limit how many questions a council member asks. Generally, we would be asked three questions, two questions, depending on the form. Um, does anybody have any suggestion about moving forward in regards to asking questions of applicants and their time? Councilman Carl. Should we, sh do you want to open it up for questions for all 23, or do you want to? Well, yeah, I mean, all, all 23, us? sure, to keep it a level playing field, but uh, a response time of 60 seconds per question or 30 seconds per because question. Because what, what I think typically happens in these situations is that if one of us asks a question of one candidate, then we feel compelled to be fair to ask the same question. And so we're going to have seven questions at least for each candidate. I mean, that's up to you. There may not be questions. It's just, it's open. Councilman Beer. I mean, I don't foresee myself, unless if there's something that really needs clarification, asking questions. I, I mean, I, I think that you mentioned something very well, Mr. Chairman, which is that a lot of folks haven't been, this is a very intimidating for a lot of people presence, and I think to ask questions of, of a lot of people um, is not something that I don't see myself doing. I'm not committed to not doing it. One thing I would suggest is, and, and someone said, I think it was um, Ms. Pointer, is to maybe give applicants a 15 second safety net. Just, just my opinion. No, no, an extra, just mention an extra minute. I know, but in other words, 15, whatever, just something in case, just because it's such a, you know, 15 seconds isn't going to do anything, but just just my opinion. But I don't foresee myself asking a ton of questions. Um, I may, but I don't foresee it. Okay. Just, Councilman I'm like uh, Councilman Vieira. I don't see myself uh, asking a lot of questions. Uh, and, and the reason is one of the problems that I see with the, the, the way it's done is that the ones in the bottom of the list are going to have the advantage of we ask the same questions to the ones up front. You get an answer, and you'll be better prepared than the ones up front. It's lifeful, fifeful, last in, first out, and so forth and so on. So I, I, I'm under respect for the clarity. I'm, I'm not going to ask too many questions. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, our clerk, Ms. Shirley Fox, knows if you'd like to take over from here, 
and call application or applicants by uh, last name alphabetical order. <coughs> Good morning, Council. Shirley Boxano, City Clerk. Um, I want to talk about the selection process to fill the vacancy in District 3 at large. The Chair has uh, 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 noted some things as far as the 23 candidates and um, uh, reviewing the applications. The selection will be made by ballot of the City Council current members. Each city council member shall select only one name. The applicant who receives four or more votes shall be the person selected to fill the remaining term of office. In the event no applicant receives the requisite four votes, only the applicants receiving the greatest number and the next greatest number of votes shall be eligible for another ballot or runoff. After each ballot round, the vote will be counted and an announcement made regarding how each council member voted. The applicant who receives four more votes shall be the person selected. And with that, I will pass out the ballots before the presentation. First applicant is Dr. Sonia Brooken. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Dr. Sonia Brookins, and I currently serve as the Soil and Water Conservation Supervisor for District 4. I am the first African American to serve on this board after having secured over 314,000 votes. I appear before this council seeking an appointment to serve as councilwoman. How can my appointment enhance the leadership of this council? There are two reasons beyond the obvious fact of gender and ethnicity. My number one concern, my connection as a Tampanian as well as my active community engagement. I have experienced running an effective and efficient campaign for office. I ran as an underdog and won. Let's not choose someone who will have to serve this term while solely focused on the next campaign. My involvement within the community speaks volumes. I walk the talk daily. Number two. I am equipped with the tools to transform, transform Tampa Bay's tomorrow effective immediately. Therefore, my role as an educator has equipped me. My role as an elected official with significant board experience has equipped me. My role as a resident and Rotarian has equipped me. My role has created a preparedness of leadership acumen for today's appointment. Selecting a candidate who has demonstrated that task of leadership will not suffice short term. The city needs longevity past 2023. With your selection of me, we will transform our city and ensure a place of innovation and safety for all residents and tourists while enhancing economic development, sustainability, and resilience. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Again, my name is Dr. Sonja Brookins. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The next candidate is Ms. Connie Burton.
Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Yes, good morning, council. This is a historic moment because today will define if this city is moving more toward a two-tier system of them against us, or is this city prepared under your leadership to expand democracy and also be a transformative city that can be a lighthouse for others to follow? I'm a mother to a grandmother. I don't hold any secondary degrees. I respect all that do. But what I do have is something that money can't buy, mm -hmm. and that's loyalty and love for the people in this community in this city. I have a proven track record of service toward justice. I want my body of work to reflect that I have an advocate, I have been a proud advocate and dedicated servant for the community, even at the cost. My passion is demonstrated through my desire for the betterment for all people. I don't possess a passive, excuse me, a passive piece, but I believe that Tampa can be transformed, that it's enough in this city for everybody. Mm. I believe that gentrification, being on the front line, is something that needs our immediate attention. I believe that there, uh, you guys, know what is the right thing to do. What is missing is that perhaps you're not willing to spend your political capital to do it. Wow. But what I'm asking is based on your re resolution that you passed in 2020, that you recognize the most marginal group in this community, that if the attention was passed, uh, passed on to those communities to lift those people up and give them voice, then everything else will fall in line. This is your opportunity this morning, and I appreciate being here. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> the next applicant is Mr. James Chittenden. Yes, sir, go ahead. Good morning, gentlemen. My name is James Chittenden. I'm the founder and chief startup and small business strategist at OneClickAdvisor.com, the entrepreneur's best friend. I've helped thousands of people start, market, operate, and finance businesses in Tampa. I've also served on boards and committees that advise the council and the mayor in budget, CRA, and public nuisance and code enforcement matters. That said, I'm sure that you'll agree that it's past time to level up some things here in Tampa. <laughs> I've been listening to those whose responsibility is to recruit businesses, such as Fortune 500 companies, here. And the responses that we get from those CEOs, we've been rejected, and we ought to use that rejection as a memo pad, reminding us of some things that we need to improve to level up. Tampa has had championship big league teams, but a minor league transit system. Let's do everything possible to level up our public transportation. Tampa has housing price and cost increases of living like California, but with wages more like Alabama. If Tampa had as nearly as many software engineers and other tech problem solvers as it did realtors and personal trainers, we would surpass Silicon Valley as an innovation destination. The result would be a more equitable and diverse economy. The highest levels of Tampa government are mired in negative politics and misplaced priorities. Like all of you, I am bothered by the focus on the handling of the police chief negotiation. Like all of you, I am bothered by the focus on John Dingfelder's emails. And like all of you, and everything that spun off from it, by the way. And like all of you, I'm bothered by the focus on allegations of sexual misconduct. Let's level up our politics, change the conversation, and get better results. Focus on better things and get better results. I'm James Chittenden. That's why I'm here. Thank you very much.
The next candidate is Dr. Carolyn Hepburn Collins, if she's here. Dr. Collins, are you here? No. The next candidate is Thomas W. Connolly. Yes, sir, go ahead. Chairman Maniscalco, council members, staff, fellow applicants, thank you for your time. Unlike most applicants, I did not grow up in Tampa. My dad was a career Army officer. I followed in his footsteps of service, joined the Air Force, and served for almost three decades. So for about 50 years, I've lived or served all over in the world in diverse cultures and countries with diverse peoples and religions in war and in peace. Most people don't realize America's military is just a cross-section of society. We may dress alike and live to serve, but sometimes that's where the similarities stop. Those 50 years taught me to build teams with people from different than me, to respect others' lived experiences, to live and build consensus, and to simply get things done and not things get my way. When I retired, my wife and I picked Tampa as our home because of Tampa's lively diversity, beauty, and history. I'm proud I live in Tampa, but while regularly listening to fellow citizens speak at city council meetings, I've heard firsthand things we must do better. I know how to get things done through no-nonsense, hard work, teamwork, and consensus. I want to do that in developing a new comprehensive plan that directs growth to the best suited areas, to where it makes sense, so plans don't economically displace people from their generational neighborhoods and homes, or destroy the character of the unique neighborhoods that make Tampa what it is. I want to build responsible growth amid climate change, clear eyes on the impacts of disaster preparedness and our need for realistic and visionary public transportation. Transportation is both a quality of life and a public safety concern. If selected, I would do better the working relationship with the mayor's administration. People won't always agree, but people need to talk and not blindside each other on decisions that impact us all. Lastly, I was disappointed to read in the news that some members would not select a male applicant. I hope this is not true. The council must not reduce any applicant to simply a category of sex, color, or identity, or gender. To endorse or disqualify by category is antithetical to equality and is in actuality de discrimination. All applicants, each of us, deserve equal consideration. I would like to welcome this challenge and thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is Mr. Robert Pete Edwards. Good morning, Council. I get right to it. My name is Robert Pete Edwards. This is my fourth time seeking an interim seat on City Council. The original one was an election. Although I got all four major newspaper endorsements, that went to Les Miller. Frank, Frank uh, Reddick was also in that seat. I came on during that time, I continued to do work in the community. My record in the community professionally and personally speaks for itself. When I came back for the second time to get an interim appointment, the word was out that, hey, we didn't, the council said it, that they didn't want someone that was gonna run for office. My intentions then and now still, I'm not seeking a permanent seat. When I saw that first one, I was told, okay, you got a chance. Betty Wiggins won that seat. One of the things I learned about that one was we had a council person that had made it clear they weren't interested in appointing any black man for an interim seat. I came back the third time. That's when Fran Davin got the seat. The only difference was I got one more vote than the first time. So now I'm here again. My work speaks for itself. I've been involved with the planning uh, of the uh, Marion Transit Way. I served on that as a lay leader on that board with Father Connelly to deal with all the issues with downtown with that. I come back, I was on the housing board, the housing that built housing St. Uh, Mobley Park. All I'm asking is you got to start working with people who have an independent mind, who's a policy wonk, and since when is it against the law that you, you can't, you conservative, you don't have an opportunity? I took the liberty this time not to contact any council member because I knew what was happening. We got to change it. I can go right in tomorrow and give you 13 things we got on our plate right now that's been lingering for a long time. I realize the die has been cast on this one like it was the last two. Even on the CRA board, 
when they told me to apply because the downtown CRA board didn't have a black member. I applied and what happened? The downtown partnership and the developers got who they want and then they got the second person the second time I applied for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Council, the next candidate is Mr. Ron Fair. Yes, sir, go ahead. Good morning, Council. <clears throat> My name is Ron Fair. I'm a professional engineer licensed in 16 states. I'm a licensed general contractor, petroleum contractor, electrical contractor, plumbing contractor. You have my education experience. Uh, it also includes uh, all the charities that my wife and I serve. I too love the city, but I've seen the city evolve, some very good, some not so good in the 30 years I've been here. I pulled a survey of the top 25 cities to live in the U.S., and I was sad to see Tampa's not there. Money Magazine, top 50, Tampa's not there. I had to go to a survey for the top 150 to find us in 88th. St. Pete's 43, Hialeah's 67, Tallahassee, Tallahassee 76, and Miami's 86. We're better than them. The good news is economically we're 16. The numbers don't match, but they don't lie. Sadly also, one of the bad and not so good things is why we're here today. Systematically, the issue was not fixed within. It was fixed externally. That means the problem still exists. It needs to be fixed by somebody, if not myself, like myself, who's an engineer, a businessman, or as diverse a company as anybody amongst our peers. We fix problems by defining them. 65 to 70% of fixing a problem is defining it properly. You get your solutions, you pick the best one, you monitor it, you uh, you're hold people accountable for it, but you also have the humility in monitoring it that if it's not getting the intended results, you fix it, you change the course. In the words of Thomas Jefferson, we must follow the truth wherever it may lead. I've heard talk about diversity, and I agree, but it's not gender, it's not race. It's a gender of thought, it's a gender of strength, it's a gender of experience, it's a gender of a will to serve and change. I have that education and common sense. Thank you very much, sir. Is that my time? Yes. Okay. The next candidate is Mr. Thomas E. Feaster. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for providing me an opportunity to join you in council. Uh, my name is Tom Feaster. The University of Tampa recruited me to Tampa over four decades ago where I completed a master's degree in education and served there in a number of administrative positions in admissions, athletics, and public affairs. I had an opportunity to teach classes on the principles of real estate as well. While serving as UT's alumni director, my mission was to develop additional support for UT from the Tampa community. This led me to being selected to organizations such as Leadership Tampa and Leadership Tampa Bay. The Merchants Association of Florida, recognizing my passion for community service, subsequently employed me as its community liaison. While with the merchants, I served on a host of nonprofit board of directors in addition to working with both the city of Tampa and the state of Florida on special projects. Currently, I serve as president of the Stewart's Foundation Incorporated, whose mission is to use the sport of rowing as a vehicle to teach teamwork and responsibility to young people in Tampa. My passion for improving diversity and inclusion in this sport 
led me to run and be elected as a director of the United States Rowing Association. During my nine-year tenure, I took a leadership role in forming a U.S. Rowing Task Force that ultimately led to the hiring of its first director of inclusion. Another significant accomplishment while a director was being selected to serve as chair of the Ethics Committee. This committee championed a program encouraged by the United States Olympic Committee called Safe Sport, which focused on the elimination of bad behavior in the sport. It deals with subjects such as bullying, harassment, and sexual misconduct. I am proud to report that training and compliance with safe sport has now become an institutional part of all Olympic sports. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Council, the next candidate is Ms. Meredith, Meredith A. Freeman. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Good morning. My name is Meredith Freeman. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's an honor to speak with you today. More than anything, I applied because I want my 10-year-old son to see more people who look like me in the halls of power. He's watching me, and I want him to know, and young, other young people to know, that Tampa is a place of opportunity for everyone. As a sister of a firefighter, I'm a proud supporter of first responders. And I'm a mother who is raising a black man. I want my son's interaction with law enforcement and the, the interactions of other black men to be safe and to be positive. As a daughter of a retired teacher who lives in Tampa, I'm acutely aware of our affordable housing crisis. I'm committed to robust investments to tackle this issue. I'm a lifelong athlete, and I found my way through sports, through Parks and Recs. I'm committed to fully funding Parks and Recs in every area in Tampa. Somewhere out there right now, there's a young woman who will be a leader and she'll be confident because she played sports. As a board certified attorney, a board certified construction attorney, I bring a skill set that is necessary during this time. Finally, as a woman with a personal connection to a mental health crisis, I've given my time to the Crisis Center of Tampa Bay as chair of that board. Thank you for listening, and I welcome your questions. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Council, the next candidate is Ms. Connie Gage. Ms. Uh, Fox Knowles, I believe that's Dr. Collins in the back? Yes. Okay. Um, after um, Connie Gage, can we go to Dr. Collins? Because, okay, and to keep it alphabetical. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, council members. My name is Connie Gage, and I'm a third generation Tampa native. It is a privilege to be here this morning to let you know why I believe I am the right person to fill this vacancy on the Tampa City Council. I have spent my entire adult life volunteering and serving my community in many different ways, helping people from all walks of life. From recently serving two consecutive terms as chairman of the board for the South Tampa Chamber of Commerce, to managing the Metropolitan Ministry's homebound food deliveries to families out of their logistics warehouse during the first six months of the COVID shutdown, and numerous other boards and organizations where I have both volunteered and served in a leadership capacity. I served a six-year term for the Hillsborough County Land Use Appeals Board, where I learned the policies and procedures that are put in place to make fair and just decisions for the residents and citizens of our community based on the situations brought before that entity. I feel that experience will also be a benefit in this role. I have been in some type of service industry profession since the age of 14 years old, and I have learned and I know how to relate to all different personality types which I think is a quality that is needed in this position as well. 
I want to work with the citizens in our community to make them feel heard and find out what their needs are. I will listen to those who come before this council with fairness and an open mind while working with fellow council members to bring a resolution to the situation based on what those circumstances might be. Tampa is my history. Tampa is my future. I will do everything in my ability to uphold this position in the highest regard. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is Dr. Carolyn Helpburn Collins. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Good morning. My name is Dr. Carolyn Hepburn Collins, 1002 West South Street, and I'm almost a lifetime resident of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida. Uh, raised in West Tampa by my parents uh, from the North Boulevard Home Projects until they built a home. My spouse and I selected uh, Tampa and we built our home in Carver City uh, to raise our two boys. Left this town in a sense of speaking three times. Was born in New York. Was back in Tampa in a year. I left to go to college and I left when my husband joined the Veterans Association to become gainfully employed as a kinesiotherapist. I present my life experience from a multitude of organizations, and I'm not going to mention them, and countless, uh, so many others, but to serve a great city is yet another capacity, and that's why I apply. I'm prepared to serve with the policymaking legislative branch of the city of Tampa for growth of the community to do add the best things to represent the constituency and we have meet that meet to meet the needs of our city and our collective duties for the pursuit of good work. Our city has a myriad of work uh, to do in pursuit of being the next great city. A plethora of projects on the docket from safety, the multi-year Hannah Street investment, Noah Street ordinance that meet the needs of the city and its people, rent costs and home prices, escalating a need for control, homelessness, hunger, economic development, infrastructure, and so many others. I want to work collaboratively uh, with each of you distinguished councilors to achieve it, but let me just skip down so I don't lose time here. And I'm going to skip over something I'd like to say to say this. William Walsworth said, small service is true service. I parallel that to one of my favorites to say, the service that we give is not about me because I'm not that important. It's actually not about you and all these other great candidates that have applied. It's about our babies our babies that are yet unborn. And so it's up to us to make a difference. My challenge to each of you in the challenge that you have this morning, just do the right thing. Thank you, bless you. Thank you very much. We have a, a candidate who's appearing virtually, correct? She is on, okay. Um, yes, ma'am. The next candidate is Natasha Goodley. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Good morning, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, we can hear you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I, uh, thank you. Good morning, I apologize for uh, not being present, but unfortunately, uh, I am in New Orleans, and it was a, a, a trip that was scheduled um, far in advance and could not be rescheduled. Um, I'm applying, I'll just give a little bit of my background. Um, I'm originally from South Carolina, attended the University of South Carolina, and migrated to attend Stetson University College of Law. From Stetson, I've worked in law. I've also worked at a um, private university. I was over their satellite campus for a few years. I've taught college, and then <laughs> and to be an entrepreneur. In that role, I've helped countless individuals create businesses. I've helped people grow their businesses and establish themselves financially with their business. I've also helped countless individuals run for office and get elected or at least get the experience that they were looking for. In the past, I've had some leadership positions. I've served the East Tampa Community Revitalization Partnership as the chair of the CAC. I'm currently sitting on the Public Nuisance Abatement Board and the Code Enforcement Board. 
And one thing I can say is every organization that I've been involved with, I have worked to somehow create change within the organization, and I would say positive change. So running for this seat for me, I believe we need someone that's going to be able to go in, hit the ground running, and help things uh, run over smoothly. But at the same time, I believe we need someone who might not be committed to running uh, for a second term. Because as we all know in politics, one of the first things you do once elected is get reelected. And if we have someone who's focusing on getting reelected, then we're not focusing on handling the matters of the city. And you have my commitment. I'm truly going in to fulfill the role right now, but not trying to run for reelection, which gives everyone who wants to step in this role a chance to run once uh, uh, comes and has a fair shot of taking. Thank open you very it. much. Thank you. Thank you. Council, the next candidate is DC Gotufus. Yes, sir, go ahead. Uh, thank you for having me here. Thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is DC. My name is DC. The last name sounds like go too fast. Last name sounds like go too fast. Without the teeth. It's a Greek name. Um, my family has been in Tampa. My family has been in Tampa since 1887. Since 1887. 135 years ago. My great grandfather became the first Greek My great grandfather became the first Greek in this town. So I, have deep roots. so I do have some deep and roots keen interest. and keen in interest community. in my community. Uh, what, I bring to the table what I bring to the table is background, is background qualifications, qualifications life is best. and life experience. When I was four, when I, was four I, lost my ear opener. I lost my hearing like that. Like that. Uh, my mom was a teacher. And she taught me how to read lips. And she taught me how to read lips. It took a lot of time. Uh, from there, I became the first deaf person. From there, I became the first deaf person uh, from University of Tampa. who graduated from University of Tampa. Then after, that, I the bank. then after that, I started working at the bank. And I moved up, and I became the branch manager. I moved up, and I became the branch manager Bank of, of Bank of America in downtown. In Wachovia, downtown. On Ashley Drive. On Ashley Drive. And I also was involved with other boys. I was also involved with with other boards, with, well, other boards with, the city of Tampa. with the city of Tampa, the neighbor element board, uh, the neighbor element board and the county with the affordable housing task force, and uh, as well as the affordable housing task force. And um, you notice the closed captioning boxes. You notice these closed captioning boxes. It wasn't there back in 1991. It wasn't there back in 1991. Came, uh, so I came here and proposed it. And I made it happen. Um, I, I almost did not apply for this um, position. And he would like me to read this out loud to you in closing. Okay. I almost did not apply for this appointment due to the statement made by a city council member in St. Pete Times article. He will not vote for male appointee. In the end, I did not let that stop me. I understand the need for representation of minority groups, which may have been the intention of the councilman. Whatever the intentions were, the fact is that the statement rejects opportunities for consideration of others with smaller or better qualifications, including minority groups and other than gender. Take a look around. People with disabilities are the most under-presidented group. Equality is important. I thank you and appreciate the opportunity to submit the application for the appointment. As you can see, I clearly have a solid and extraordinary qualifications to serve this position. If I get the honor to serve the community through this appointment, Tampa will be paving the way um, for a new chapter towards being one of the most inclusive and diverse cities in America. I will serve with dedication, commitment, and honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilman Beale. Thank you. Thank you for your time. If I may, Mr. Goat. Um, go to us, if I may, sir. I just wanted to say uh, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. I, I've 
oh, yes, sir, I followed your race for property appraiser, and you ran a gentleman's race, un caballero, as we say in Spanish. And if you don't make it here, sir, I would love to meet with you. I'm asking my wonderful aide, Brandon, if she could come out and um, give you our information and get your information, because if you don't make it, I'd love to meet with you because we want to get you involved in the city, sir. Uh, I thank you for your heart. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Sure. Him and Bob or Henrik has a good friends now. I know that. Like I said, a gentleman. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Council, our next candidate is Miss Allison A. Hewitt. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Good City morning. Councilman. I am third generation from Tampa, having attended St. Peter Kaber and St. Lawrence Catholic Schools and Chamberlain High School. Because of my professional skills and experience, I will be ready day one to serve. Major issues are coming before City Council, the 2023 budget, the charter review, transportation funds, and the housing crisis, and many more. I have direct hands-on experience with public, nonprofit, and governmental budgets, public policy, economic, and community development. I have served as chair of the Hart Board, managed business development for CRAs, and represented the Port of Tampa, the airport, and Zoo Tampa before, before the state, the county, and the city. I have been involved in creating, debating, and promoting public policy in the fields of economic development, tourism, and transportation with the heart and dedication of making a difference in my community, my city, and my state. Council work is not easy, nor is it meant to be a place where everyone holds hands and sings from the same hymnal. It is a place for respectful, intense, passionate discussion and debate. Ultimately, if done correctly, you have got some actionable and, man and meaningful actions. When you have a body as diverse as the uh, as, as city of Tampa, the people who represent it must represent that diversity too. We are stronger together, and if I'm fortunate to be selected, I'll serve with honor, integrity, and a heart for all those I represent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, our next candidate is Parker Alexander Holmans. Yes, sir, go ahead. Good morning, Councilman. First, I wanna thank you all for your time and energy that you've put into this process to ensure that you select um, the right person to serve alongside you all. When I moved here in 2013, I dove headfirst into this thriving community. I served on the Tampa Human Rights Board and dedicated myself to nonprofit organizations such as the Humane Society of Tampa Bay, Equality Florida, and the Tampa Bay LGBT Chamber of Commerce, just to name a few. One of my most meaningful engagements came when Mayor Jane Castor appointed me to be on the, on the Tampa Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. I took on this challenge because I believe that affordable housing is one of our city's most pressing issues. As a Tampa Housing Authority Commissioner, I've been honored to be on the ground floor of our West River development, the creation of the Rome Yard site plan, and the preliminary planning of the redevelopment of Robles Park Village and the Mount Zion Memorial Park into a transformative neighborhood. As our city grows, it is vital that we develop concrete and effective plans to maintain a level of affordability and accessibility so we do not shut out low-income families who have either been here their entire lives or wish to move here. My experience on the THA board will bring additional understanding and expertise to council so we can effectively plan our growth to be inclusive of all of our residents. Finally, as a young person and a member of our LGBTQ community, I'll bring a new level of diversity to the council and a fresh and informed perspective when it comes to issues like transit, growth, and technology. I bring a personal understanding of what makes a young person want to stay here or attracts them to move here. And final, as our city transforms and new businesses arrive here daily, it's imperative that our city's leadership represents all walks of life. I can help you do this, and I would be honored to sit next to you all and lead this community into the future. It's a cohesive and empowering city council. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank 
Council, the next candidate is Amanda Lynn Hertak. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm grateful for your time. In your consideration of my application for the vacant city council seat, I ask you to examine three things. When is the right time? Where is the right place? And who is the right person to be Tampa's next city council member? First, the right time. With our city in a period of both housing crisis and one in which home values are outpacing personal incomes, it's vital that someone who has proven the ability to find solutions between developers and neighborhood residents be seated to council. I'm proud of the work I've done in Old Seminole Heights to bring all stakeholders to the table, with the result being multiple large-scale projects that were successful for developers, retained the historic character of our neighborhood, and spurred much-needed infrastructure improvements. I'm confident that I can bring that success to all of Tampa's neighborhoods. Second, the right place. I've already been sitting up there for two and a half years as a VRB member, and I am grateful for Councilman Citro's recommendation of me, and I thank Mayor Jane Castor for twice appointing me to the board. I know the process, I know the rules, and I know how things work in this chamber. Finally, the right person. You all know me. Many of you served on the Charter Review Commission with me. You know I'm a deeply ethical person dedicated to pragmatic solutions that will make Tampa a better, more inclusive, and more prosperous city. This is the right time. This is the right place. And I am the right person to be Tampa's next city council member. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, do it now. Yeah, do it now. Council, the next candidate is Miss Julie Jenkins. Hello, council members. My name is Julie Jenkins. I've been serving Tampa for over 30 years. It is my home and community. I'm applying for the next, to be the next member of Tampa City Council because the council has an impact on people's lives. I'm ready to serve the citizens and businesses of Tampa. I would like to share with you some specifics on how I believe I am the most qualified for the city council position. My business background, I worked over 15 years in corporate sales with Virgin Atlantic Airways. I promoted Tampa as a destination both in the leisure and corporate market. Many of the people coming to Tampa contributed to our local economy. I was also a big advocate of, for the Riverwalk when people and politicians were not. During the pandemic, I highlighted and promoted over 300 small businesses to assist when help was needed in those difficult times. Neighborhoods and schools. I have an extensive background working with neighbors and small businesses to reduce crime and bring neighbors together. I have started Neighborhood Association and always been involved to improve our neighborhoods for the betterment of the community. In regards to youth, besides raising money for our public schools, I also work for one of our country's oldest African-American schools located right here in Tampa, St. Peter Claver. Kids in need who needed help, work I am quite proud of. I'm also a strong environmental advocate and work many weekends on our Tampa Riverwalk. I bring a temperament and hard work ethic that I believe the people of Tampa can count on. I can promise the citizens and council I will be a good listener and work to solve problems and find common ground. I have a 30-year track record of serving our community with no titles or honorifics, often when no one was looking. I will work to make sure we continue to move our city forward and not backward. I do believe in the people in the city of Tampa and I hope to continue to give back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is Kella McCaskill.
Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. My name is Keela McCasco. I'm a native of Tampa. And I want to thank you for the opportunity to participate this morning. I would also consider it an honor to continue in the legacy of former council member Dean Felder. As a native, I've been fortunate to serve the greater Tampa Bay area in the mortgage lending and the real estate industry for the past 25 years. I love Tampa because as a result, being groomed by my family, the culture, public education, and the Tampa experience afforded me the opportunity to be the real estate professional coming from the inner city to be the, the real estate choice for world-class athletes, I mean Super Bowl champions in my home city. As a way to give back, I recently launched a nonprofit where the overarching thread is community outreach and service, which raises the awareness of the needs in the community that we serve, which is how the various stakeholders reached me and asked for me to represent them as the next um, city council member here in District 3. They actually labeled me as the ambassador for change in communities, one zip code at a time. As the next city council member, I will spend this term triaging this housing crisis. As many of you know, we're in the state of emergency and doing absolutely nothing could impact us all. We can't just build our way out of it, which is why I would approach this housing crisis with short and long term, from a short and long term perspective, which must include neighborhood and development friendly objectives. The growth will continue. We're now the third most populated city in Florida, just behind Jacksonville and Miami. The city is on fire, and I feel that we're on top best 10 list every single week, it seems. Everything is going up, yet the salaries are the same. It'd be my quest to find a way to address that. I'm compelled to find ways to continue to thrive, yet preserve the character of the city without gentrifying. As a council member, I want more opportunities to hear from the district, giving voice to their concerns as well as their needs. The great urban planner, Jane Jacobs, said the cities have the capability of providing something for everybody only because and when they include and they're created by everybody. In closing, I'm thrilled at the level of interest in this vacancy. There's a room full of skilled talent that could be used collectively, whether we're in the seat or not, to lead this city and move us forward. I look forward for the opportunity to working with each of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is Mr. Patrick Murphy. Yes, good morning. Go ahead. Good morning, Council. I'm Patrick Murphy. Uh, with, I live here in Tampa with my wife, Lex, and our twin two-year-olds, Max and Miles. Uh, I'm seeking appointment of the vacancy because this is our home. Uh, my wife's family has lived here uh, her whole life. They moved here from Cuba. Uh, my wife and I got married at Sacred Heart. Uh, she was sworn into the Florida Bar at the maternity ward at TGH, and our boys were born there a few weeks later. Um, the last decade, we've seen Tampa grow by more than 20%. This is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to shape and develop our city and to leave it better for our children. Uh, the council has the chance to make sure we maintain our strong community and cultural values, to manage the booming economy and growth of our local businesses, and to make sure that we address the uh, development of our neighborhoods to meet the needs of our expanding population. To aid the council in this mission, I believe my past experiences will be a valuable addition. Uh, my time in the Florida Army National Guard taught me to make the most of limited time and resources. We trained on a fraction of the time and on a fraction of the budget to the same standards as the active duty Army. Uh, I was responsible for the care and stewardship of multiple millions of dollars worth of equipment provided by taxpaying Floridians. Um, my time at the Public Defender's Office in Tampa allowed me to zealously advocate for our city's residents during some of their most trying times. It gave me a unique perspective on the struggles faced by many of our members of our community, helped me understand the causes of the problems and where the city might be able to intervene. My work in the local real estate market as a licensed broker has helped me familiarize with the issues facing homeowners, tenants, and businesses. And uh, as a partner in a family firm, I have a, I apologize. And as a partner at a family firm, um, I feel that I, I've seen where the city can help and hinder small businesses as well. Uh, I believe these experiences will translate to a dedicated service to the city uh, with a focus on service and stewardship, um, and I really appreciate the council's time and attention uh, and, and hope you'll consider me for the vacancy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Council, the next candidate is Reverend Thomas Scott. Bishop, He's Bishop. Bishop Thomas Scott. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> 
Good morning, Mr. Chair, and to this August body and board. Thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I really don't have to run down a list of what my qualifications are because you know who I am and you know what I've done. You already know that I served on Hillsborough County Commission for 10 years, served three times as chairman. You already know I served on this board with some of you and served three times as chairman. You already know uh, that the CRA in East Tampa was created by me and the Board of County Commission. You already know that being on this board, uh, I worked with the board in rewriting the SBE and the MBE ordinance that you're now functioning and operating under. You already know that the Hillsborough Affordable Housing Task Force was formed by me at Hillsborough County, and now they operate and they form and they operate based on that which we established. Uh, I could go on. I could go. I could talk about 40th Street that we put in seven million dollars to pull down 100 million dollars from the federal government to complete 40th Street. So I have a track record. I have a track record uh, of accomplishments, but also I have a track record of loving people and understanding people. I have a track record of working and building consensus. I have a track record of being able to listen to what the issues are and try to find solutions to those problems and to those needs. You know who I am. You know my record. You know I work to build consensus. You know I will work and make sure that we're working together in order that we might move this city forward. There's a lot of talent in this room, but be mindful of this. You have one year to learn that position, one year. And you know, based on your own experience, it takes more than a year to learn what you are doing. And so consider the experience that I bring, and thank you very much for this time, and God bless you for what you are doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is Ms. Tamara Schamberger. Good yes, morning. Good morning. Hi. Mr. Chairman, Councilman, good morning. So good to see each of you today. I'm Tamara Schamberger, a very proud Tampa native. In fact, I'm fourth generation Tampanian or Tampania. I'm the great granddaughter of Cuban immigrants who migrated into Ybor City in the 1800s, where they were the finest of cigar rollers. It is by chance that I was born right here at MacDill Air Force Base to retired Chief Master Sergeant Norman and Dorothy Schamberger. But it is by choice that I have dedicated my life to the great city of Tampa personally, professionally, and educationally. I am Tampa. As a former elected official, I am uniquely positioned for this seat. I have broad experience in local government, including working with very large budgets, policy governance, and of course, staff oversight. As the former chair of the Hillsborough County School Board, I'm well versed in running a business meeting in the public eye. Mm -hmm. Councilman, for the last year and a half, I've taken time to deeply reflect on my time as a public servant. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've emerged stronger and wiser, well-suited and more equipped to be an even more effective public leader. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that a strong Tampa City Council is one that is well-balanced. I'm a black woman with the needed experience to help ensure that every decision continues to be made with well-informed, diverse opinion and input. A black woman needs to be a part of every decision made here in this council. All right, council, I stand before you today with no allegiances or no alliances, or no beefs or grudges for that matter. Neither do I stand with any solid position. Councilman, I vow to be fair. I vow neutrality in making every decision here on council. I'm ready to work with you on some of the major issues affecting council, smart development, water, housing, workforce development, zoning, and so many other issues. You have a grand opportunity in front of you today to make a decision to appoint a person that's ready, that's ready to help you continue the business of the city of Tampa moving without interruption. I thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is, excuse me for the pronunciation, Biba Bibha Shabad. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Councilman. Thank you for this opportunity and your consideration. My name is Biba Shaved. Like many others, I believe the City Council requires more diversity and female representation, which I hold. 
I personally am passionate about transportation and housing solutions. With my in-depth experience in housing as a real estate broker, focusing on humans over houses, I see how housing has become a stressful situation with first-time home buyers and renters. With the growing population of new residents moving into Tampa, we experience challenges in the different parts of our neighborhoods. I want to serve each neighborhood equally and efficiently. I have worked hard for the last 20 years serving the residents in the city of Tampa by providing direct services to students in public education by working for Hillsborough County Schools, serving on boards and commissions for public safety and finance as the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Indian Advisory Council for the last seven years, served as their past president, served on the Sheriff's Shooting Review Board, a graduate of Mayor's University, and served on the Budget and Finance Committee. I have the ability to run a successful competitive campaign, with, which I did in 2019 for the same seat, District 3, which makes me unique among the applicants. Voters voted for me because they wanted to see me in the seat. Thousands of residents chose me as their representative for the very seat. This opportunity would satisfy their choice. I hold the same qualification as each councilman, and that is the ability to listen and find solutions. I am a solution-oriented, and I get the job done. I have built many relationships along the way, and I understand how the decisions we have to make impact everyone's quality of life. I am approachable, and I do listen. And at the end of the day, empowering our neighborhoods is the key to our success. Thank you. Questions? Thank you very much. Council, the next candidate is A. Kendall Trotsky. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kendall Trotsky. I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Tampa, and three other generations in my family are also Tampa residents. I am invested in this city. I appreciate you having reviewed my application for the vacancy of city council. My years of professional experience as a broker associate realtor and my association and service on committees and boards at various levels throughout the community has given me the opportunity to know and understand the needs of our city. Safety, reasonable growth, environmental sensitivity, as well as city structure, ordinances, and protocol. I have worked within the city development department on new construction and renovations, and at times, zoning was involved, both commercial and residential projects. Mutual respect and continued communication amongst my colleagues and clients have always been my mantra. I feel confident in my ability to confer amicably with others, listen to their opinions, options, and ideas to come up with a conscious decision within a group setting. These qualities have sustained my marketing consulting business for over 23 years. I am excited to have the opportunity to apply for this at-large position. I have always taken a leadership role in all of my endeavors, and I know I can be an effective leader on the city council as well as a viable representative for the citizens of our city. I am not a conservative. I am not liberal. I am reasonable. Thank you. Thank you. Council, our last candidate this morning is Carol Carey West. Good morning, go ahead. Good morning. My name is Carrie West, and I'd like to approach you and say thank you for what you're doing today to filling a position. I'm a 42-year resident here of Tampa. My partner and I have uh, been here and for 44 years together and uh, graduated the University of South Florida, also the alumni of the year of uh, University of Florida, of uh, USF, and a proud veteran of the United States uh, Air Force and also a law enforcement officer with the United States Air Force. Uh, proud moments have been most recent as bringing, uh, being a co 
person uh, bringing in the multi-billion dollar corporation here in uh, Florida, that being the Kroger Corporation last year, and bringing them into Florida and also being part of Tampa Pride and then speaking on their behalf. Uh, bringing in and bringing together people is one of my major things that I like to do in partnership and also in reasoning. I've also been on the CR, uh, helping with the CRA on the Ybor City Development Corporation and also the Barrio Latino Commission as being some of the things. Also, you may be a lot of the things I like to do is also helping with the youth in the area, being on the Ybor Youth Clinic and a lot of other organizations that I've been on, as you might have seen in my resume. But one of the things I really like to do is also going out there looking for the affordability in housing. It's a very big thing for Tampa. And the other one is horse transportation. Our transportation system is needed. I think it's one of the things that is going to be creating and help creating Tampa in its growth. We looked many years ago that said we need to keep the youth in Tampa. Well, guess what? They're staying now. So we have to go and now find the places for them and the outreach of trying to find better places for them to live and also better places for them to travel and also economically keep them a place to have a great time. And that's what we're going to have to do in our time. So I appreciate this time and Carrie West, and I'm going to be looking forward to seeing what you do. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Council, will you complete your ballot and pass them down? Motion for a 20 minute recess, just kidding. <laughs> so Mr. Shelby, while the first ballot is tallied, the first person who reaches four votes will be the elected council member, correct? That actually council, that would be your selection, your appointment, item number two would be a resolution would be uh, presented to you to um, actually appoint the person to the vacancy and yep. that that'll be for your consideration once and then once there is a council member elect that person then falls under the sunshine laws and basically is before they're sworn in on thursday that's correct once you make your appointment once the resolution is passed the sunshine law applies and i see my council members uh nodding in agreement and uh so whoever the um the person selected is um and certainly i'm uh, I'm happy to advise them about that. And but that, then, but, that that, that, but thank you, Council, for being yeah. mindful of that. Thank you. And that individual would be sworn in on Thursday. That's our next meeting, so it wouldn't be today. Got to be ready. Council, 
The results are as follows. Mr. Carson voted for Amanda Hertak. Mr. Goods voted for Tamara Schamberger. Mr. Citro voted for Amanda Hertak. Mr. Vieira voted for Meredith Freeman. Mr. Miranda voted for Meredith Freeman. And Mr. Maniscalco voted for Julie Jenkins. The individuals moving forward would be Meredith Freeman and Amanda Hertak. We will have a round two. Do you have to print up the new ballots? Oh, we have it already. Right. I'm sure they got it. I need another ballot. Do Council, sir, Carlson voted for Amanda Hertak. Um, Goods also voted for Amanda Hertak. Citro voted for Amanda Hertak. Vieira voted for Meredith Freeman. Miranda voted for Moran, uh, Meredith Freeman. And Maniscalco voted for Amanda Hertak. And uh, Amanda Hertak is the winner. Thank you very much. Mr. Shelby, what is, uh, what is protocol now? Uh, Council, if you would uh, please uh, take a five minute recess or maybe less, and I'll have that resolution prepared we for number two. We are in recess for five minutes. Thank okay, you. Thank you.
Welcome back. I'd like to uh, well call the city council meeting back to order. Roll call, please. Carlson. Here. Goose. Here. Citro. Here. Vieira. Here. Miranda. Here. And Maniscalco. All right. That was a uh, much quicker than expected process. Yeah. We have our new council member elect Hertak. Uh, if you would like to approach the podium and uh, say a few words, you will be sworn in on Thursday, and then you'll be up here with us. But yes, Mr. Shelby. And, and Mr. Chairman and members of council, you are now on item number two on your agenda. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I wanted to uh, allow the council member elect to speak before we move the resolution. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just want to say thank you, and I really look forward to working with all of you. And like, like you, you know that I'm deeply ethical, and that I'm really willing to work with all of you on um, everything. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Well, welcome, uh, Councilmember-elect Hertak. Uh, you are clearly, in my opinion, the most qualified individual that applied today. Um, people may or may not agree to that, but Variance Review Board, Charter Review Commission, your neighborhood association uh, involvement. It makes me think of myself, because I was on city boards and neighborhood associations. And your application uh, reflected that uh, on top of the uh, support from the community and the endless, I don't even know how many phone calls, but emails that came in. That came in for a lot of people, but I think when we say uh, hit the ground running, your application speaks for itself and your service to this community does. So congratulations. Any other council member have anything? Well, I guess, oh, go yeah. ahead, sir. Go ahead. Council uh, Beer and then see. Just wanted to say welcome aboard, and we had a great conversation about a week and a half ago, and, and I really look forward to working with you. I know you're a very passionate person who's been involved on a lot of things, and, uh, and I look forward to working with you and um, just doing great things for this city. So congratulations. I mean, to go, to go in there, I remember in 2011, I think it was, the last opening that we had like this, and I, and I briefly thought about putting my, my hat in the ring, and I said to myself, just too much but, but you did it and so congratulations that takes a lot of heart so congratulations thank you. councilman Citra and then councilman Goose. thank you very much mr chair when you and i've known each other for a while we served on a board together uh congratulations now it's up to you you got the votes to be here now you have to go out to the community you have to tell the people who you are what you're about you need to go to Chambers of Commerce. You need to go to the unions. You need to go to the places of assembly, village assembly. You need to be out in the public. Please remember that you represented Seminole Heights. Now you represent all of Tampa. And you need to be with all the people. Lynn, it's up to you now. Go prove yourself. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Councilman Goods. Well, my friend, you've got nothing to prove. You proved yourself when you worked with three of us on this board before. Uh, I know you, you're qualified. I know yes. you'll stand up. I know you'll fight the good fight, and that's what we need somebody to make sure we're fighting the good fight. It ain't going to be easy, Lynn. It ain't going to be easy up here because you've got to make decisions sometimes that people don't like sometimes. But I know working with you before, you made decisions on the board, me, Bill, and Joe, that weren't popular, but we, we did it. So welcome aboard. Councilman Miranda, Councilman Carlson. My, my, I know you're not asking for advice, but my only thing to tell you is, uh, sure, it's not easy. But no matter which way you vote, you cannot make everybody happy. And, and that's about you. You have to do what you think is best for the whole city. And, and, and that's how you become accepted. So your vote is your vote. I'll never question your vote. Uh, it, it's something that uh, you inherited uh, by this vote today, and uh, you didn't have to spend much money. <laughs> but but I, I commend you for, for being here and doing what you're doing. However, the next vote that you're going to face, it's a little different because it'll be the vote of the public. So the only advice that I'm going to give you without you asking for it is just be yourself. Thank you very much. Councilman Carlson. I just wanted to say thank you for stepping up and for volunteering. You've been doing that for a long time in lots of capacities, but especially it's important um, that you stepped up and the other 22 stepped up to offer to help uh, in this time when city council is under attack. And we need to 
uh, make sure that we have honest ethical government. And I'm glad that you mentioned that in your presentation. And from our time on the Charter Review Commission, I know that you will you will work on that, that you'll be thorough, and that you'll uh, look through uh, the documents and um, and, uh, and and do what, what you think is best for the community, uh, regardless of whatever threats are out there. So um, thank you so much for stepping up and look forward to working with you. Unfortunately, um, none of us can talk to you now, <laughs> except in these chambers. That's one of the frustrating things. I, I believe in, in sunshine, and, uh, uh, but it's, it's hard because uh, we, we all know each other out, uh, we all knew each other previously too. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. And now, may I have a motion to move the resolution? Motion from Councilman Goods, Councilman Miranda with the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We'll see you Thursday. Want we to get a picture together? Could we just have an announcement of that vote for the record? You want to do a roll call? Vote? No. no. All right. Um, motion by Councilmember Goods and seconded by Councilman Miranda. Pass unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Councilman Miranda. What other females were uh, at large on council? Gwen Miller. Gwen Miller. Gwen Miller. Gwen Miller was the first to run citywide, I think. Okay. And uh, get elected, but then you have to go back. In the old days, it was a little different. You had to live in the district, but run citywide. That was happened in '74, I believe. You can check the record. I, I think I'm correct, but I'm not sure. It's been Lynn you had to live in a district, but run citywide. Gwen Miller in the last 20 years. But I think that changed. And I believe that was challenged in court, wasn't it, not, sir? Is that the same? It was challenged in a lot of courts. We we begin Monday, I'm sorry, Monday, <laughs> Thursday at 9 a.m. You know the drill, you know where to go. You'll have your name on a parking space. Um, your office is in the back. And then you get, you'll get sworn in uh, top of the meeting, and that's it. It's official. So congratulations. Thank Close you. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.